Let's move on. Joining us now from London is Laura Dodsworth, who's been on the show several times before. She's just released her latest book, Free Your Mind, a book that aims to provide readers with the tools to recognise, wait for this, and counteract the efforts of society to manipulate us. We know that this is going on, climate hysteria, the pandemic. Laura's book looks at all the most deceptive techniques that the state, that the government, is using against you and me. She joins us now. Laura, always great to see you. Welcome back to Outsiders. Uh, this sounds fascinating. You probably uh, may not be aware, but we've got a government misinformation and disinformation bill that's about to pass through Parliament. Hopefully it won't, but uh, threatening all sorts of things. The government is exempt because the government's not allowed to... Uh, it never peddles misinformation, but we the, we, the public, of course, suffer all sorts of things if we dare say anything. You've written about this and, and, the, and the techniques that governments use to influence us. And this is really scary and sinister, Laura. Tell us about it. Absolutely. Well, I mean, I was listening to your show before you brought me on, and Rita was talking about scaremongering, fact-checking, misinformation. You know, it's not just in Australia where you have new laws coming in about misinformation. Interestingly, this is a common theme in many countries around the world. And it's interesting because they're engaging in practices that don't sound very democratic on the face of it in order to supposedly preserve democracy. Now, in a sense, manipulation has always been with us. It's, uh, it's, a, it's just persuasion. Persuasion is as old as democracy. It's as old as language. But, you know, if you were to go onto Amazon, you would find thousands of books which are dedicated to the dark arts of advertising, nudging, persuasion, propaganda. And so, for one thing, a book that teaches you a defence against the dark arts is long overdue. But my co-author, Patrick Fagan, and I put forward that we're at quite a unique and, in a sense, quite a perilous time because... First of all, there's a confluence right now of sophisticated psychology with AI. And that's frankly a brainwasher's dream. Secondly, nobody who watches Sky News Australia is going to be unaware that we swerved the most awful authoritarian horrors because we saw in our lifetime, governments use propaganda and fear mongering to whip up compliance with draconian lockdown rules, uh, supposedly in our best interests. And another point is that psychology used to be very much about fixing and diagnosing people, but it's increasingly used to predict and manipulate us. What's different about the times we live in is that governments all around the world, including in Australia, are using behavioural scientists and increasingly sophisticated psychological techniques to control populations. So in a way, our relationship with governments has changed. Whereas it used to be we voted parties in to enact policies based on manifestos, now it's a much more kind of sneaky, subliminal, top-down effect. I would argue that we live in a form of psychocracy now because psychologists employed by governments are using covert techniques in order to nudge you towards policies that you didn't even know that you voted for. But I should say the government isn't the, the book is not only about government practices, it's also about all the kinds of manipulation that you can encounter in day-to-day -day life and from companies. Um, we live in an age of information overload. Mm. James. The average person receives about 174 newspapers worth of information every day. And when we're overloaded like that, our brains rely on shortcuts and biases, which can be used against us. And Laura, does this explain why you suddenly see, you know, whether it's coming from government nudge units or some other sort of, uh, you know, concerted campaign to manipulate people, why suddenly, you know, people talk about it's the current thing, the current thing that everybody suddenly feels really completely passionate about, whether, oh, today it's COVID, tomorrow it's climate, to, you know, the next day it's going to be something else. But this way that, like, almost a school of fish, everybody just seems to change directions and go in another direction um, by some, you know, obeying some kind of conductor's wand. Bingo. You've gone straight to the last chapter of the book. Um, <laughs> and you fast-tracked. Yeah, the last, the last chapter of the book is called um, Stand for Something. Because if you don't stand for something, you can fall for anything. I think everybody would recognise that there's this sense at the moment of a net tightening, of truth being censored, woke, woke ideology capturing institutions. And I think people feel quite rudderless in essentially what's quite post-religious and post-fact world. 
And in this time, a lot of people don't really know what their values are. So we do recommend that people work out whether it's on paper and they write out what their principles are, or they go for some more traditional practice like going to church or joining a club with like-minded people and understanding what their values are. You see on social media in the way you just said, you know, people are following the next current thing all the time. You see emojis. Um, what, what have we had? You know, you get the rainbow flag. There was the COVID mask, then the Ukraine flag. And this isn't to say that people shouldn't support projects or movements or show their support. But the way you see these movements go like tsunamis across social media shows that people feel quite unanchored. So one thing that we do in this book is we have a chapter called Get Immunity and we detail all the different types of nudges and propaganda so that people know how to recognise them. Patrick, my co-author, is a very talented behavioural scientist. He's ex Cambridge Analytica. So he's really showing you up the magician's sleeve. And this helps people spot the tricks. Laura, so you talked about the government quite a lot. Uh, I'm interested if you could give us a couple of examples of these deceptive yes. techniques yes. Yes. to influence us that we may have uh, I would love noticed to. or not I would noticed love during to. the pandemic or, or anything else that yes. you think is worth, worth knowing. Yes, absolutely. There are so many. And honestly, once you've seen them, you will never unsee them. So it's so valuable to learn the techniques. One would be trigger stacking. So this is when emotions are laid one on top of the other. And of course, these days, it's commonly fears. I can give you an example of a newspaper report in the UK just a few weeks ago. So um, there were articles about parasites. Uh, parasites, we don't like those. They're nasty, nasty things. Nobody wants someone in their house or on their body carrying infectious diseases. Oh, no, disease we don't like that and they're being brought up from the north by climate change so natural yeah. oh, so oh. Story, you've got parasites you've got disease and you've got climate change so watch out for trigger stacking another thing is radical incrementalism a fantastic tip is stand your ground don't allow yourself to be boiled like a frog the problem is that if a politician say told you the end goal, where they want you to be, you might say, oh gosh, no, I'm, I'm, no, I'm not gonna give up my private car forever. So through a series of sneaky little policy measures, they drip, 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 get you used to it. So here in London, we had the congestion charge. Then we had the ultra low emission zone. Then the ultra low emission zone is widened to a bigger area. Then they talk about taking it to towns and cities throughout the United Kingdom. And then they talk about pay per mile. So what's happening is that driving becomes sequentially more and more expensive and inconvenient to take you towards the end of policy goal. So watch out for radical incrementalism when policies are introduced step by step. The simple thing there is to just say no right from the beginning, stand your ground. Stand your ground, say no right from the beginning. Wise words, which we use very often on many <laughs> topics on this show. Laura Dodsworth, always great to chat to you. So that book, Free Your Mind, your new book, absolute must read. We've got it up on the screen there, Laura. People must read this to find out the tricks that are being used against us daily by the politicians, by in particular the left, seeing as we're under a left government, but no governments are immune from this, sadly. Laura, keep up the great work. Great to chat to you, and we'll see you again soon. Thanks so much.